Hello, Warrior Podcast! My name is Vera, and I'm joined, as always, by my two reverend co-hosts, Katie. Hello. And Libby. Hello. What? Reverend? Yeah. I heard the revenant. I was like, You're no, a revenant. no, oh, no, no! Give Leo an Oscar, <laughs> bear. Uh. Not revenant from Winona. That's Earp. what I thought. Oh. I, <laughs> I did not expect that Leo she, reference. But you know, Livy. That's yeah. where my mind goes. Leo, you can't, you can't delete that part of my her. My heart will go on forever for Leo. <laughs> Even though he's very he's, awful. Yeah, I'm putting it a coin yeah. for Leo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. We are talking about Amazon stuff More today. Amazons. Amazons all over the place. It's kind of like a sequel to last week's Lifeblood. This kind episode. of, yeah. Two parter. No, <laughs> yeah. no, it's an yeah. Amazon two parter. Yeah. Amazon exploration. Nope. Yeah, it's 517 Kindred Spirits. Written by George Strayton and Tom O'Neill, and directed by Josh Becker. Becker is back, you guys, with some tea to spill. <laughs> Our favorite tea drinker. <laughs> oh, man, let's What's hear it. What's that tea? Uh, he answers one of my first questions, which is, why is this called Kindred Spirits? Yeah. It seems like a title that has nothing to do with anything that we right. see in this episode. He says that the entire script was thrown out, like... Three days before the shoot, which I feel like is not the first time mm. he, this has happened on a Josh Becker episode. Oh, man. Could it be him? <laughs> Could it be? Or do they just throw all the scripts out on Xena and Josh Becker's the only one willing to oh, talk, spill yeah, talk tea about, about it? it. Uh, he says that they had to basically come up with the whole thing in a day, mm-hmm. mostly Rob Tappert. Did yeah, that. Rob. The original script was apparently very dark and involved the Amazons wanting to kill Argo. And handsome Gabrielle's horse. What's the real name of handsome? Amber. He's, he spilled that tea. Apparently, Amber. That's a silly name. It's just handsome a regular horse name. Yeah. No um, thanks. It's weird because like I feel like they did it last week at uh, Lifeblood. They were gonna kill that horse. Yeah. So but it would have been done. As it is, this episode does have some weird repetitive qualities hmm. with Lifeblood, which is interesting because the writers George Strayton and Tom yeah. O'Neill wrote they those sections yeah. of Lifeblood too. So I guess this is just how they write Amazons, which is let's fight about tradition versus new stuff, right. and then which dance. will win? <laughs> then dance. <laughs> Uh, these guys, though, I, I mean, um, now we're not really sure if they wrote this episode. Yeah. Judging by we the team. We don't yeah, know. But it's like Rob. Rob, maybe. A lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> certainly, this episode is a mixed bag, but the good is. It's a great mixed it's a bag. good. Yeah. I like this episode for many reasons. Mm hmm. Let's talk about Let's them. Let's talk about them. All right. So we open on some really gorgeous shots of New Zealand, you guys. Mm-hmm. Like, super epic. Second one in a row, right? Is that like a helicopter shot? That first one through the river? I don't so know. Pretty. Maybe it was like leftover from season four or something. Maybe. It was, it was quite <laughs> It was striking. just some really good, just like the yeah. mountains. Uh, it didn't need to be there, but it was. And it was great. Uh, and then you have some uh, gorgeous ladies bathing. Uh-huh. Some like pretty flute music, <laughs> reed music, IDK. Idyllic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's splish splashing around in a river. There's like a waterfall or something nearby. It reminds me of that season one episode where you cut to Xena, like watching them taking a bath. Do you remember that? Some mm-hmm. women oh, bathing. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. a good moment. So you have our uh, sort of like hero Amazons, right? So some of them we've seen in the last episode. We're, we have Cyan. We have Eris, and then we have this new one, Rhea, or Rhea. I will screw that up. Rhea. Rhea. Okay. Yeah. Cool. They're all a bunch of Xena and Gabrielle fangirls. Yes. Every yes. single person here. Rhea is obsessed with Eve. Except that Cyan. is number one. Yeah. Cyan <laughs> literally splish splashes like slightly away, being like, oh, I can't believe they're anymore. still here. <laughs> um, but they're very much in a good mood. But then. There's a point of view shot. Creeper cam. Creeper cam coming yeah. out of the bushes and watching them bathe with some heavy breathing. <laughs> Great. My fingers go to the coin. <laughs> Boom. All right. Then you cut to extreme cuteness. Ooh. Like extreme. Yes. Xena has <laughs> created a little baby swing for Eve. Oh, oh baby swing. 
And she like kind of like you you know the first thing she does is like tests it out right, and it looks like she's doing like the sling, like the David and Goliath, like his little slingshot. Oh yeah, thing. yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, and so like, like a Gabs, catapult. Yeah, and Gabs yeah. comes out holding Eve, and she's like, oh, uh, like stand down, like don't shoot. It's a lady with a baby. Yeah. <laughs> It's for the baby, Goober. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. Goober. Why did she call her Goober? I have no idea. I think that's a pet name. I think that's what she calls her in bed. <laughs> oh, oh, Goober. I, I want to point out that I'm over here confused because I totally missed this. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. You I think Goober? I don't oh, no. have any... Notes about Goober. Goober. Oh, wow. And I feel like I have let you down immediately. Oh, yeah. There's so much in this episode. Well, you got the rest of it. Don't worry. Okay. I'm oh, going to have to go back and watch Goober. this again. Goober. Goober. Are you sure that's what she said? Goober. <laughs> she a thousand percent said Goober. And it's confounding. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I... Yeah, I don't know. I so, don't have this note. What? <laughs> so, uh... It's a swing for Eve, and Gab says that, that's real cute. You're nesting. Mm-hmm. Aww. And she's like, have you ever thought about settling down? And I love <laughs> Xena. This is a great, this is, great this is like line. one of the classic Xena lines. Uh. I think we quoted a lot, too. She's like, so have you ever thought about settling down? And Xena's like, what do you mean? Like, when I'm too old to do kicks and stuff? It's so well delivered. <laughs> it's so, like, she's so it's great. It's really good. Lucy, it's Lucy's clear really she's great. literally never thought of, of that future. Not one She doesn't even time. know how it's to describe weird it. It's weird because we know she hasn't because of the previous episode in, like, early seasons, I want to say two, uh, when they're doing, what is it, Troy? That one that ends with, she's said that people, li- people like, in their in line their of li- work yeah. don't get to live long. Yeah. So I think that was the never... execution, the second oh, Malieger episode. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, it was early on, and, you know, she clearly has never thought about it. No, she can't so, afford to. But yeah. here, finally, is an episode where maybe she can afford to. Yeah, so... Uh, it's good. So it's really cute how throughout this conversation, they're both uh, pushing Eve in the swing back yeah, and forth. Yeah, that's how it's framed. Mm-hmm. Good job, Josh Becker. I also like the detail that they're wearing their Amazon outfits, both of them. Mm-hmm. So they oh, sort right. of, they're not in their outfits we're used to. That's what they always do when they go somewhere new that's further that's afield. <laughs> they're like, we have to put on Blend the clothes. In. This is not the first episode they shot after she came back, right? No, I it's think not. this is now okay. deeper into the run. All right, because they make a really big deal uh, about when her she putting appears on uh, the in outfit. her princess outfit. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, it seems important that Xena is weighing domesticity while not in her warrior outfit. Right. So uh, also, let's just point out before we move on that Gabrielle has come into the scene and asked Zena if she ever thought about settling down and is talking about nesting with the baby. Mm-hmm. And that's cool. And they're sitting there pushing that baby between them yep. and talking about this. They're just yeah. having, uh-huh. And not only that, but they're talking about like renovating their house. Basically. Yep. Traditional mm-hmm. lesbian activities. <laughs> um, so I like Zena's hair as well. That's not very gay, but yes. it's just good. No, she <laughs> braids, the, right? She yeah. She the two side braids. I when love her two side braids. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And I love that at the end of this conversation about staying, Gabrielle like, asks Eve, she's like, you want to stay, don't you? Oh. It's a really sweet little moment. I mean, this is, this is rough because like Gabs kind of comes in here and she already kind of has her mind made up. Yeah. She would like she this to it happen. She knows would be good for her. Yeah. Right. She can see it being great for everyone, but especially her. She's <laughs> like, the, you know, the kids here, a.k.a. these Amazons, really need some guidance, right? Because Zena killed all their parents. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> Just saying. Never and, forget. And Zena's like, wait a second, are you actually considering to stay? And she's like, well, only if you and Eve stay. Right. Yeah, that's okay. true. That's important that she's saying, I'm not going to do this without you. Exactly. She thinks right. it's going to be good for them. But well. she's also like very like, I hope you answer it correctly to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I yeah, want to do this. I yeah. think it's fair. It's, it's hard to, when you're in this scene, You, I mean, you already know that they're not going, going to, to stay this. here. Aww. There would be no show. Exactly. However, I think that it's really important, you know, while you're in the show called Xena Warrior Princess, 
to point out that this is a huge part of her life and her identity, and this is where they are right now, and she's seeing that there might be a role for her, and there yeah. they have this baby, and one of the things that has been on their minds is how do they live with this baby right. in the lives that they have. So here they have a house and a community, and Gabs has a place and sees something good that she can do, mm-hmm. and maybe they can all stay. It seems almost too perfect. Almost. Well, she tells Zina to like consider it and think very carefully about what kind of answer she's going to give her. And uh, Zina's face really does say a lot. I think yeah. in in these in this scene, she has an amazing contemplative face. That yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's the first time really she's good. ever taken this idea seriously. Right. Yeah. It's sort of, it's sort of scary. I feel like it's a nervous face. Yeah. Right. So back at the little bathing situation, the, <sighs> the creeper has been spotted. Oh, the no. shaky cam get POV. Him. Get him, girls. Oh, boy. Yeah, I love how they, like, chase him into the bushes and then just start punching the yeah, bushes. It's yeah. just a shot of these ladies going, boom, 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 <laughs> bushes. I just want to point out that the promo, I would I like to point out the promos because I get to watch them at the beginning, um, basically is just a full-on 15 seconds of them being like, we're going to kill Joxer. <laughs> and Zena's like, I'm going to do it. And that's the whole promo. So people were like, we had a week to live with this promo. And be, and be celebrated. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I hope this happens. I feel like. Perhaps there's no mystery of who's in the bushes, if you've seen the spot, but, yup. Surprise! <laughs> it jocks her. Yeah. We're back with Xena mm-hmm. and Gabs, swinging okay. Eve, okay. and we have some more amazing stuff here. Okay, okay. Slow down, slow down. Slow down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see it as our domestic bliss. hmm As a line. Yeah. Because they've never really had a home. and That's a line. This is a good one. Oh, my God. Domestic bliss is a weighted phrase. Mm-hmm. This episode, we haven't said it yet, is it the most ever? I think it is. I think it's Ever shippy, ever texty. Yeah. But, uh, thus far, it's just crazy. in terms of the frequency and amount of spoken um, yeah. dialogue about how yeah. they're going to live their lives. And the clear, like, acting choices mm-hmm. yeah. of delivering such lines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's especially stark when so much of season five has been playing their relationship down. Right. So right. Suddenly you're just like, whoa, okay, relationship talks. Whoa. They're trying to form. They're breaking right. up. Whoa, oh. they're back together. Whoa. Rob's like, killing horses script. Bye. Yep. Let me burn you. Let's do this domestic uh, bliss situation. Thank you, Rob. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this was a really, like, weighted conversation. Uh, Gabs is just literally like, look, we can totally fix this house up. It'll be our domestic bliss. Uh, and then Zena says, wouldn't hurt to consider it. She yeah. has this, like, tight little smile. Yeah. It's a little, like, trying mm-hmm. to pacify Gabs. Yeah, exactly. At the same time, you know, she's going along with it. She's yeah. not saying no, which is a big deal. <sighs> it's but huge. It's, it's, a, it's rough. It is. And there's also shots of Eve in this yeah. that are always really cute. And then, so Zena says she's going to consider it. And patented soft voice, super, Gabrielle, thanks. Super O-M-G. soft. OMG. Yeah. Yeah. Also, sidebar, we were watching this episode and there was some loud noise. I don't know where it came from. And I was all, um, what was that? And Vera's response was, I don't know. I can't hear anything over this gayness. <laughs> <laughs> so that was us watching this. I mean, this is beautiful. This is awesome. I can't... This episode's great. I don't care any about anything else that happens in it just because this plot line is so awesome for them. Yeah. It really is. It's been long in the coming, and we're very grateful mm-hmm. to see it on screen. Okay, so they're interrupted by some Amazons who... Uh, they bring the, you know, the creeper. We have now realized, oh my God, it is... Joxer. And he has violated sacred Amazon law in mm-hmm. spying on them while bathing. Must be punished. And Joxer's like, I know them. And Zeta comes over, kind of like, then she like leans over and kind of whispers to him, Did you bring that letter yeah. from Cleopatra that I asked, I asked you, you to? Get? Yeah. And he didn't. So she's like, I don't know him. 
<laughs> yeah, what? Like punishing him for like failing at some kind of messenger gig? I have to say, they're setting up the fact that there's going to be an episode About with Cleopatra. Cleopatra for like several episodes. Yeah. It's crazy how much they're it. doing this. It's bizarre narrative continuity because it really does not need to be there. Uh, Considering how they never set up anything else that they do, <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't um, need to be there. I guess if it were something like Caesar, you know, that's a character who's like been... Yeah. so huge in the show that yeah. having little name right. checks you'd go oh cool are we doing this but the fact that Cleopatra's just sort of like a it's, side character it's just like we're gonna have an episode in Egypt soon yeah. like why like, not, I don't that know. doesn't it's count weird. as an arc reminding <laughs> you about something existing does not count as like an arc I'm right. sorry guys um, <laughs> but and I also just love this not serious way Xena and Gabrielle are treating this yeah because obviously going to become more of an issue right but yeah Gab's just just as lol i'm gonna give an order yeah i I actually i mean i thought it was funny in the context Mm -hmm. of this very low stakes episode but uh it did kind of bum me out considering we've just done things like eternal bonds where like jocks are (laughs) relationship was taken very seriously he's part of their family he's their friend the fact that they're like oh stupid fucking jocks are he can be in the stocks for like days while we hatch out our relationship that (laughs) doesn't make sense that they would like leave him there but she's just like oh he'll be there for a day but also because he did do a gross yeah. yeah. So, no, he's he's a disgusting dude yeah. this episode. Um, like really bad. This is the worst <laughs> we've seen him. He just cannot stop saying <laughs> disgusting things to fill our problematic jar. But it's good to remind of that episode prior because yeah, that did just happen. That but really also, did just happen. One of the great things about how you described it as this low basically low stakes episode that is about all of this, you know, family coziness. They are kind of just treating him like they don't think anything is going to happen to That's him, true. really. They have the power here. Yeah, they have all Nothing the power. Nothing bad yeah. can happen to them so. with Gabs as queen. Right, yeah. and so she's like, oh, you're so gross, Jaxer. All right, put him in the stocks. And immediately goes like back to... Oh my god, so like the house, like let's yeah. change this. We put the porch around this yeah. side. <laughs> it would be so she great. They have a little like, porch. A ra- oh yeah, Her a dream porch. home. Yeah. Oh, she wants to sit on a porch and just hang out. Oh, mm-hmm. sounds nice. <laughs> oh, nice. All right, so Jax is put in the stocks. Oh no, this, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, our favorite pillory uh, prop, right? <laughs> um, He's like my spine. <laughs> oh yeah, it's my spine. Oh, I can't believe he name checked my least favorite line in all Zena. Yes, my That's spine. Funny. Okay, so these, these, about that. these kids run up. Yeah. And they go, pervert, loser, fat creep. I don't understand half of this. He answers with, hey, I'm not fat. I mean, <laughs> why is that part of their chant? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Uh, whatever. And then they're throwing gross stuff at him, and I hate it. I think it's mud, but at first I thought it was poop. No, and but I was he really throws angry. the poop. Yeah, he definitely throws some poop. And I, I, I have questions about that. We'll discuss this a little bit later. Poop? We're going to yeah, talk about we're poop? we're going to talk about it. Sorry, right. Katie. Um, okay, so, I mean, I did like that. He is definitely like, yep, to pervert and loser, but <laughs> nope, to fat <laughs> creep. Okay. Not just, not, creep is yes, but fat, fat, fat is, is no. Fat is no. <laughs> Well, I was going to say that I like the world building that you see the little girls. You know, here are they all girls? Yeah, they're all girls. Okay. These young Amazons who I, yeah. we're not exactly sure how, like Amazon women like. Wait, so these kids are too old for Rhea. She's yeah. like, she just I mean, wants that, a baby. That was part of my confusion. Is I was like, you have children running around this camp. Like, Where why are you? Yeah. They're too old. She later, wants baby later size. Later, Joxer's in trouble for kissing Rhea out of season, which made me wonder if there's like mm. a particular time when Amazon women mm. are supposed to go sleep with men to have children to boost the ranks. Summer, summer babies versus winter babies. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I had a lot of questions, but I was glad that there were children there to remind you, okay, the Amazons do have some way of Continuing. Hmm, that's interesting. It's like how if you're an actress, you can have you can have babies. You have to plan your pregnancy yeah, during to the have hiatus. It. Yeah, too, for the hiatus baby. Lucy Lawless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way to go, Lucy. All right, so this is where for another Ray is like uh, obsessed with Eve, and she really wants a baby. 
but it's hard to get to a man because, you know, they're in Amazon and all the men want to kill them. She should just steal a baby. <laughs> oh, my God. What's wrong with her? Just go, find a baby, take it. <laughs> How hard could it be? I love this, like, next little setup where Eve is sitting in the yard. She's plopped on the ground. She's such a little lump. It's oh, really cute. She's very cute in this episode. Yeah, she's adorable. However I kind of was a Rhea here. I was all like, All the Gimme. cute little babies who play her in this one is, are good. Joxer needs to use the little warrior's room. I hate this. <laughs> Have we not established how much I hate any of <laughs> these things? <laughs> he stops Eris and needs her help. She's like, um, I'm not going to help you. Zena says she doesn't know you. Prove to me that you know Zena, which is really just her asking for fun stories about Zena. Right. So she's like, well, what does Zena, you know, need in a sidekick? And he's like, um, well, like a good war cry and like flips. Why would he pick those things? <laughs> those are classic Xena things. Those are Xena things, not yeah. her sidekick things. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this is a problem. He doesn't really, you know, gauge, how gauge sidekicks yeah, work. sidekick work very well. And so she's like, perfect, thanks, bye. And so, you know, leaves him there to suffer. She goes straight to the, the banya. Oh, this is the best scene. Let's just stay in this scene for the rest of the episode. Can I just say I love the set, too? Yeah. I love the, like, shafts of light. It's really pretty. And I love that you just have every single character who appears in this episode. Mine is Joxer. <laughs> He's not in it. <laughs> chilling out here. Yeah, they all have, yeah. Yeah. like... I, I was like, oh, they all have a drink, but it's like, it's probably it's just, water. It's just Gabs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gabs has pure yeah. vodka in so, yeah. Wait a second. They went from bathing in the river in the morning to, to the steam, room. The to steam the room. room. That's the life of the Amazons. Oh, man. Good time. It's pretty good, Zena. What are you doing? Right. Questioning it. <laughs> all right. So there's all these ladies that are there, and they're, you know, kind of all talking about sex this is meant to be like you know the high school girls locker room yeah a bit of, i'm pretty sure it is bit of man talk so cyan says she fucked a dude once before joining the amazons and that's interesting because joining the amazons what does that mean more world building <laughs> you can have a life before you become an amazon Rhea, she wants to fuck a dude and He's- then eris meanwhile is like Never! She says she's going to stay a virgin forever. Forever is a long time, says Zeta with a look. And which makes Gabs choke on her drink. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Zena catches her eye and kind of like swipes Smack. at her back. Yep. With uh, She's got like a tree branch and it's very suggestive. It's yeah. a great it's, moment mm-hmm. in the history of Zeta Warrior Princess. <laughs> what it is. It's extremely Don't flirtatious. Don't underplay any line that no. happens in every, this episode. Every little look is just full of sexiness. It is. Yeah. And it's to... Lucy to Ray's credit that they throw all those looks in there because yeah. e- even just tiny little smirks and things uh-huh. that are going on in this scene, everything yeah. is amazing. Yeah. It's a funny scene, right? Because they're mostly yeah. talking about men. Right. So, you know, it doesn't pass it, the Bechdel test. Yeah. Yeah. It's a room full of women. But at the same time, you feel like when they're looking at each other and talking yeah. about sex... They're not talking about sex with they're men. They're not. And there's a point to think Gabriel says in a minute. That is true. I feel like sometimes they are, though. But sometimes they definitely yeah. are. Yep. It's and just that they have, like, a whole sort of private life that right. they're communicating between each other with looks. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and that we sort of know based on watching the show as well. And, the, you know, they're kind of, like, laughing at these little girls. Yeah. <laughs> this is their idea of, like, yeah. what romance is. <laughs> Rhea wants to know what it's like being with a man. Zena says, good news is it's different every time. Bad news is it's different every time. <laughs> her, her face for this is so good. You can just tell how much they're enjoying like having this conversation. This yeah. is really, if Rob wrote this in two minutes on a napkin, God bless him. Because you can <laughs> tell that all, the actors are yeah. really happy to be having this discussion. Yeah. She says, uh, sometimes, you're always hoping for Greek fire, but sometimes you get diddly. <laughs> That's a good line. <laughs> and then you get this amazing Gabs line. Yes, this is what I was referencing a second ago. Zena has studied the subject more than I have. But what she's trying to say is some people are better lovers than others. People. She says people, not men. Just mm. gender neutral people. 
<sighs> what do you think? Has Zena has studied the subject more than I have? It's not wrong. <laughs> It's just a plain fact. It's just a plain fact. <laughs> Obviously, the scene is being written by at least three men, we <laughs> are assuming, mm-hmm. right? To me, stuff like that, especially with this show, and at this point, they very much know what's going on with all these characters, to even just include the word people in a conversation that's been explicitly about these Amazons wanting to have babies and have sex with men is mm-hmm. notable. It's really, and it's easy to glaze over it, I think, when you're just listening to the silly episode. But it's really important that that's in there. It is. It is important. And yeah, it seems interesting that the Amazons, particularly baby crazy Rhea, keep saying, like, man, what makes a man a good lover? And Gab's answers with this gender neutral people. Yeah. So what does make a man a good lover being gentle and kind no no yes (laughs) no yes (laughs) no it's a complicated subject this is just so perfectly in character for them this made me happy with the continuity because of course xena loves the bad boys and of course gabrielle in her limited sexual experience one time one time had a a, a nice man yes Um, this was perfect this may be my favorite moment Cause the it no was yes. Just, yeah, because yeah. it was just like so specific. I think I like Zena's little like coy sly face after Gabs's people line. Because <laughs> it's like a cut to her, I think. Mm. And it's just oh. good reaction. I mean, every, yeah. Like like you said, a private world between them. Yeah. Every, every glance has a private quality, yeah. which is just really happy to see that. Yeah. And then, you know, she's like, it's, it's a complicated subject. And then Zena goes, you'll figure it out as you get older. Which also, I think, had uh, some levels to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For Gabriella or for everybody? Um, for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. I think they're all still learning. Maybe for Xena. <laughs> Xena's still working through yeah. some yeah. shit <laughs> with men. Uh, so then you kind of steer the conversation back to My friend the baby. Eris. Wait, oh. Eris and her, you don't need a man. <gasps> yes, to have a baby. And she obviously began the thing by being yeah. uh, uninterested generally. Yeah, in the Which is also important to throw in there as well. Yeah, yeah, she seems to be asexual. She does not understand why anyone would have sex unless there was, like, a, a child. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we kind of go back to the central issues of the episode, which is that Rhea is really happy to have Eve around. She doesn't want them to leave. And then Gab sort of like throws a wrench into things by being like saying that they're thinking of staying. Right. And everybody gets happy. And meanwhile, you just see on Zena's face like, oh, I was not ready for you to announce this in public. I am not happy about Mm -hmm. this. They're moving a little fast, Mm -hmm. says Zena. And then Gab's like realizes, oh shit, and kind of walks it back to just like, we're only considering it. We're considering maybe awkward oh good scene and then we immediately get a bad scene oh who cares oh. in a good scene <laughs> which is Rhea going up to joxer and dropping her clothes being like like what you see and yeah. he like flirts with her by telling her how to spell his name which is like such inept flirting the x is for sexy <sighs> i don't like it and then he's like, I've killed a lot of people. Does that turn you on? Which just makes me think back to, um, uh, I can't think what the name of the episode is, but the Chris Mannheim episode where he kills someone and yeah. just, like is upset about it. Right. And right. feeling kind of bummed at his character development that he still uses this as like a come Plan. on. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, this is Joxer, of course. He's all talk. Right. All right, let's go to a good scene. Okay. Do it. Domestic bliss. Hmm? It starts with an establishing shot of their little house. Aww, like if you're cabin. in a sitcom and you have like <laughs> your Brady Bunch house. Yep. Yeah. Or uh, married with children. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> a big old like horn. Well, that's good that you bring that up. Yeah. I think. Uh-huh. Because they're dealing with some similar <laughs> um, the horn issues. Yeah. This horn wakes uh, Zena up. She bolts right up. She's like, what was that? And Gams gets up. Oh, my up. gosh. <laughs> She's like, Go. Was that you? Oh, my God. <laughs> what a great moment in the history of this show. It really was. <clears throat> They're in her separate face, beds, yeah. but so, like, Lucy and Ricky had separate beds, too. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
but you're gonna say Lucy and Rob. No. Oh, no. oh sorry. I meant Lucy. <laughs> Lucy a ball. I love Lucy. Uh, I and love Ricky Lucy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Whatever. We we glaze over that fact. Um, so it's the sacred ram's horn to summon the queen to the daily ceremonies. Um, I just, I love how Zena is just like, it's ridiculous. Her accent is gone, by the way. The whole <laughs> it's just too sleepy to be American. Yeah. Um, but it's just really funny. I love Gab sort of like getting dressed to go by like taking her sigh and like taking her hat. Yeah. It's very cute. She's got to go off to work. It's weird that they're like sleeping in their day clothes. They don't have pajamas. Well, like at least in regular episodes, right? They're they like they take, take off, off the, the breastplate. The top yeah. Parts. I mean, it's true that these like suede outfits it's look like, really heavy. They don't yeah. look like something you just curl up And it just in makes it with. seem like that's like the only thing that it's it's like a muumu that you wear. Yeah. This is maybe a problem. I don't believe this is really their bed clothes or, for that matter, their bed. Right. So Gabs gets up and she starts doing her stuff and Zena's like, I'm not sure this will work. What am I supposed to do all day while you're off queening? Oh my gosh. I love queening as a verb. Yeah. This scene is so cute. Sorry. (laughs) It is. Super cute. We agree. So uh, Gabs' yes. suggestions for things Zena can do while she's off queening. Relax. <laughs> uh, clean one. this place up, my fave. Oh. Play with your daughter. Yes. Like, all right, the, the three things that she has told Zena to do with <laughs> all of her time here. Yeah. Relax, play with your daughter, and clean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does she know who she's talking to? Well, um, she throws her a last know. one. You know? Unless you want to go hunt and kill something. And Xena perks up. Yeah. yeah. Finally, something Xena's excited to do. <laughs> As opposed to playing with her daughter, which sucks. <laughs> um, another cute thing about this going into the next scene is, I don't, maybe she's done it already, but I don't know that we pointed it out, but she starts calling Eve, Evie. I yeah. think that starts and here. That's, that's adorable. That what? Right now. So sweet. As soon as Daddy G goes to work. <laughs> Daddy G. <laughs> Evie and Zena go outside and she puts her into the swing and is this that shot Liv that I could not get over this shot confounds you this is like a really weird shot of the swing where it just looks like this like big leather diaper <laughs> and like like th- like it's one of those things where they needed to trim a second off the beginning of the shot because you just get this like log close up of the like just leather swing <laughs> without a baby in it and then finally the baby's legs go into it. No, it's and like the leg gets stuck yeah, for a second. Right. It's extra long. It's extra long because they can't yeah. even get the baby into it. It's not composed properly so you like don't even really read that like a baby is there for a long time and you're like what is this close up of a big leather diaper for like 10 minutes? That's how long it felt. It felt like 10 minutes of diaper. It's a dumb shot. <laughs> Josh well, Becker. Long baby legs go in it eventually. Yeah. There's certainly some uh, <laughs> cutting of two different filmings going on because I don't think the baby is there on the coverage of Xena doing the scene. I think when oh. they do have the baby, it's a stand in for Xena behind. There you go. Yeah. And it's a little bizarre. It's Mystery that's yeah. happening. And that's how that works. But so you're saying but- actually Paul Grinder shot. Oh, shit. <laughs> shit. You're right. Well, I w- He's like, get the diaper, get the diaper. <laughs> it does that doesn't explain why the shot of the swing and the legs lasts for so long. No. That's just an no. editing That's just bad editing. Yeah. Anyway, it's fine. <laughs> you like a little baby legs? They're cute. Yeah, yeah we love them. So legs. cute in this episode. So yes, so Zena starts pushing Eve around on the swing, and and she's like talking to her, and she's trying to talk herself around yeah. to yep. this whole lifestyle, mm-hmm. and she almost succeeds. Really, yeah. yeah. She says, one day all of this will be yours. Here she's safe from the Greek gods, which we were like, huh? Yeah. Is she? How are they safe here? They don't seem safer here than anywhere else. Yeah. Are they, these baby Amazons going to protect them from, like, Hermes when he comes? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, but uh, okay. Lots of babysitters. Lots of babysitters. And Gabrielle's happy. Gabrielle is happy. That's yeah. one of the three things that it makes us a good work. place. Yeah. Gabrielle is happy. Yeah. It's great. That but you can tell even here that she's, she, not. she's not happy. No. Yeah. Like, how, can she prioritize Gabrielle's happiness when she herself is 
But does that bored. wait? But does that mean that every day Gabrielle is prioritizing Zena's happiness? Nope. When no. they're out on the road, I no. Oh. I mean, this is part of. You're right. The power dynamic of their friendship is this the life that Gabrielle would choose for herself? Right. You it, know, it's not Zena's. Is does Gabrielle even want this forever? Mm, right. You know what I mean? Is it just obligation to these baby Amazons who need? It's weird, though, because, like, a lot of times, Gabrielle, what she wants is some kind of, like, stable, like, one place to do some good. But at the same time, she thinks she wants that and then keeps going off with Xena. But maybe it's because, (laughs) but so that the compromise would be Xena would stay. And Mm. then, you know, like, then Gabs would be perfectly happy there because she would have Xena and then she would have the thing. It would be fun to see Gabs realize that actually in the end she is... You know, not happy settling down anywhere either. I think the baby is the X factor in this yeah. because it's, without the baby, right she the baby. might be all. Maybe we'll can stick around here for five months and get everything in order and then leave. Right, yeah. but it's a little bit more. How do we keep this child safe and give this kid a future that makes sense? Yeah, and babies like you know stability. That, yeah. That's what's different is Eve probably does need one place to grow up in rather than their like, yeah. nomadic lifestyle. So suddenly she hears something in the bushes and she goes over there and she pulls Eris out. She's here to prove she can be Zena's new sidekick. She can fight. She can jump. She can do 30 of these things and starts doing push-ups. <laughs> Just a funny line. But can you clean? <laughs> Another amazing line delivery. Everyone is so happy. She looks episode. so evil. Oh she's my so god! Can it you is clean? My it is my favorite. Okay, fame. okay, okay. We're coming up on some good content. Good subtext content. Oh god! Get all right, to all right, all right. It. Okay, so Joxer is brought before the queen. Gabrielle. Yes, Gabrielle. She is in like a throne room. Yes. And she's dozing. She's asleep because they got woke up by the horn. Yes, right. She has not had Not the baby, the horn. (laughs) Not enough. And the horn did not wake the baby up, which I thought was insane. (laughs) That baby sleeps deep. Uh Uh-huh, sure. The baby was not in that scene. (laughs) (laughs) So Cyan is like, Queen Gabrielle. Gabrielle jolts. It's sort of awake and says, half asleep still. Not tonight. <laughs> Which might be the best line in the whole show. I don't know. It's so good. Is that going to be your other tattoo, Katie? Not tonight. <laughs> oh, my oh, my God. My arm. Oh, my yeah. God. It's just what a good, because if you're a completely oblivious person by the end of season five, that's not, that's just like, what, what? You know, a weird dream statement. But if you're a not completely oblivious person, that's some fun Line. <laughs> yes, indeed. So that that was not English. Some fun line. Some fun line. That's a fun line. It's just not. No, too tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she uh, sentences Jaxer to one day in the block, right. and because you got to count time served, mm-hmm. uh, that means he can be released after lunch. Yep. Good solution. But Sayan's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> You haven't said the magic word. <laughs> There's an ancient Amazon code that says that uh, he should have his eye removed. So this is good. I like that the idea that she has come in and been all about establishing some sort of tradition situation. Which is funny because in Lifeblood, it's uh-huh. all about don't obey your traditions. They're steeped in like violence yeah. and bloodlust. Well, maybe this is all tied together about how it doesn't actually work. So that's good. <laughs> but like the Ram thing, she said was her fault. Yeah. And now this is her fault. She's trying to give them like her own teachings and now they're being used against her. Exactly. So he's getting his eye removed because that's the traditional rule for oogling. <laughs> I don't what was the actual he his, thing? He's getting his oogler removed for oogling. <laughs> is, that how you, is that how you pronounce that? Is it Goober. Oogler? Oogling? Oogling? I think oogling. oogling. Well, what about a googly eye? A go- <laughs> that's a different word, <laughs> goober. <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay, this next part is great. We cut to Xena. She's uh, filling her day with some activities. Like whittling. 
Yep, whittling is fun, she says. <laughs> I think that she's being sarcastic. Do you? <laughs> I do as well. Uh, this was all Josh Becker. Oh, Pro- props to him. The nice. whittling is very funny. Nice. I liked it. Uh, was it a reference to Buffy? She's <gasps> wh- doing a steak. She's yeah. yeah, creating a steak for herself. And I love that. Like by the end of the scene, the amount of like shavings, it's the wood shavings, a is a, yeah, it's like a huge, huge pile. Uh, they're doing a very good job of visually establishing that she's bored, mm-hmm. and she sounds bored, and she's very bored. Yeah. But at the same time, it looks kind of fun. I guess like, it's a nice <laughs> mix of kind of. Like, wish fulfillment. Like, we kind of want this for Zena. We want Zena sp- to spend a whole day whittling and do being we? bored. I kind of do. I'm happy I li- she I gets like, this I in like her life. I like that this happened, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Eris comes out. She's, like, holding a broom. She's definitely been cleaning their house. Can I ask you a question, though? Yeah. They must have so many days when they're bored because they just travel and we don't see it. Right. You know but then Z- but Zena's, like, fishing but tra- or, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's the stuff that she likes to do. Shit like that, Yeah. Yeah. She can be doing all that like here. I don't get why she can't. I think it's the difference between like survival and like hanging out. Right. Mm. Like if you're in the wilderness, you're exactly. like doing things to like stay alive. But if you're just like hanging out in your house, you can like whittle. You can have hobbies. Okay. <laughs> like it's funny to see Zena have hobbies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, and this is a fun uh, interlude where Eve crawls into a log. Oh my God. And at the other end of the log is, is a, a giant, giant fire. fire. <laughs> um, and you think Zena isn't registering it, but she so has clocked it and yeah. it's totally fine she's totally calm about it and just uh, throws their whip out and turns the log around so that <laughs> when Eve, Eve climb, climb, crawls out I'm just gonna out. turn this log around <laughs> it's really cute yeah. you see these little baby butt and legs crawling through yeah. this log <laughs> very funny I liked it Yeah, and I like that yeah all the while this is happening you have Eris like talking about all the like improvements to the house she's made Just yeah and she's like it's like on. a great cozy little house uh perfect know. for an amazon right yeah and that's her and her then kind of final line on it right and then Zena kind of like to herself is like great it'd be great if we if i were an amazon an <laughs> poor Zena. this is not her life this is not my beautiful house this is not my beautiful oh. wife <laughs> Okay, I love this next part too. All right, so 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 much good stuff, man. I like this episode except for some of it. So Z- yeah, Zena's uh, line here is amazing. Okay, so Gabs comes home. She's like, "Honey, I'm home," and then she's like, "Joxer is gonna be blinded," and Zena responds with. Nah, that's just a myth. <laughs> Guys don't really go blind from doing that. And she's like chewing on the end of she's, her steak. Yeah, she's picking her teeth <laughs> with that steak that she's been, you know, whittling. Everything about this is amazing. Oh, it's so good. But then we get, no, like, you know, the actual plot. <laughs> yeah, she's like, no, no, no. I'm literally like, I'm not talking about that. Like, kind of transition. Good. Tina's got masturbation jokes. Fun. <laughs> but then uh, Gabs notices that Zena has cleaned the house. You know, does not correct yeah. this misconception. Mm-hmm. She's like, yep, yep, I did. <laughs> she's really trying to make it work. And it made her happy. Yeah. yeah. Gabrielle. Yeah. yeah. Gabs is like, oh, she's supporting me. She's doing her best. So she's basically like, Gabs, just let him off the hook. He's had enough. Okay. Now there's more gross throwing of stuff at Joxer in the stocks. Sigh. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think of him trying to scratch his nose? Oh, uh-huh. like, I didn't register that, but I guess I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kids come back, they throw stuff at him. Um, it, to me, it does not look like mud, but I think I it's supposed like... to be like food or something. Okay, Gross. food. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, it's not Whatever poop it because he kicks poop at them. And I hate that too. Maybe different kinds of poop, like horse poop versus cow <laughs> their, poop. Their own poop? <laughs> their own poop. I I had questions about the like amount of poop that's like under him because remember he wanted to go to the bathroom and they never like They never let him do if that. If we stop talking about, <laughs> about poop. poop. <laughs> Maybe. Poopy dikey. Stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rhea comes and she's oh, like, let's make a baby, huh? Yeah, she like wants to know, like, you know, he's the first man who's ever been near her who didn't try to kill her, so uh, she should definitely fuck him. 
That's how wow. it works. That's, how it That's works. amazing. It's just amazing. <laughs> he, she's fine. You're peeping Tom, but at least you're not trying to murder me. So let's have a baby. Yeah. And he's like, can't do it on command. Needs cheap motel rooms. <laughs> Dirty magazines and some sexy lingerie. See, he always has the anachronistic (laughs) stuff that bothers me. And I don't know. That one is particularly silly because it would be really easy to like just dial that down ever so slightly to sound more ancient Greece. And yeah, because you really could. It's ancient Greece, like some dirty uh, scroll paintings. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Dirty hieroglyphic, cheap tavern. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> that those kind of like writing moments, and they particularly come from Doxer for me, yeah. and yeah. I don't get it. I think Ted Raimi improvises particularly oh, in Josh that's, Becker episodes. That's a good point. Yeah, because yeah, and someone should then go, "Oh, fun that's improvising. Funny. Let's switch this to Tavern. Do one more time, real yeah. quick." Yeah. yeah, it could have yeah. very easily sounded a little more Xena than it does. <laughs> we have a little uh, private moment with Cyan. She's in the throne room, and she has parked herself in the queen's chair. I'm going to say this is a Shakespeare reference to Henry IV, part two. Henry IV? <laughs> <laughs> Henry IV, that's his name. <laughs> Wait, I thought it was Aerith. It's Cyan. It's Cyan, of course okay. it's Cyan. Yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> all, My notes like, are all a mess. I want to be, I just can't wait to be queen. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Henry the Fourth. <laughs> Rhea comes in and uh, definitely catches her in the act there. It's interesting because I like had my eye on Cyan through both these episodes, Lifeblood mm-hmm. and uh, Kindred Spirits. I was like, oh, is she going to be another Velasca who oh. like, yeah. wants the throne and is like going to do a bad thing to get it? But she's not. No. But she, she, like, she does well want to, she does have a little Velasca inclination. She definitely remember does. In Lifeblood, she's like, I took the name. She wants not, it bad. Not because I wanted it, but because <laughs> I had to have it. And, uh, I think she wanted it. Mm-hmm. Gabs and Zena knew she wanted it then, too, because they both did that eyebrow thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. I forgot about the eyebrow thing. So Rhea kind of, like, shames her, and she's like, listen, do the right thing, Cyan, and you should support Gabs, our queen, okay? Rhea also says that Cyan's the bravest-hearted woman in the tribe, and that she All knows right. she'll do the right thing. Okay. So that's how you know she's not of Alaska. No, nah, she's, she yeah. Means she's, well. She means well. She does mean well, yes. So support Gabrielle. Okay, so Xena leaves Eve with uh, a babysitter, like Just a random, a totally, yeah, totally like, random. I was one. like, who is that? Is that a character? Did I need no. to write her name down? But she was no. saying before that she's, everyone's yeah, a babysitter. She's not so wrong. Funny. Everyone is a babysitter. And she's like going to go off with her bow and arrow. She's so excited to go hunting. Hunt and kill something. Yeah, it's legit. But Eris uh, stops her. Oh, Aris no. has shown up with the party committee <laughs> and <laughs> is the best for Gabrielle's coronation, I guess. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a special and dance. It's a special, yeah, yeah, another one. Doesn't she <laughs> want to make this the most special day of Gabrielle's life? Yeah. She's like, yes. 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 Oh, my God. Oh. I can't with this. I really can't. Then Gabs goes to yell at Joxer. For being a peeping Tom. Mm. I don't like putting mm. her in this position. That's true. It sucks. It's not cool of him. Yeah. And she's like, well, maybe there's like a loophole yeah. in They're the They're right Amazon back to law. their um, comedy violence. Yeah. That's true. She's just beating the crap out of him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's not my fault if women are bathing and I'm peeping at them from the bushes for a really <laughs> long time. <laughs> <laughs> not all joxers. <laughs> all right. Skip to the next part. Okay. Which is so good. Zena learns the sacred dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's my note is it's me taking Xena notes. Oh yeah, Aww. right. Because yeah. she's so not into it. Like she has to do it, but she doesn't want to be doing it. You just it. want to watch the show and enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, it's real hard taking, taking the notes. Aww. Well, she it looks hilarious trying to yeah. do these moves. I and wrote, this is her sincerely doing the moves. Remember, Lucy Lawless can't oh, dance. No. <laughs> That's oh, no. not true at all, because that doesn't fit the actual plot. 
whatsoever. I she's don't know. She's not into it. I don't know. The way I understand the plot, Lucy Lawless can't dance, and that's what breaks them up. No. They break up over Lucy Lawless's inability to dance. You cannot tell me otherwise. That's what this fight is actually about. Okay, well. This is harsh. <laughs> Actually, Miss Rhett, like, I feel like Abs, when she comes and spots her dancing. I thought she liked yes. it. Yeah, she has a moment of I thought that was like, smiling. oh my god, she's really But maybe trying. it's like, I smile so I don't cry. I think we maybe missed a beat where, in the beginning, it does look like she's doing it. And you would see Gabs react to her actually trying. Mm-hmm. And then Xena just devolves into yeah. really not being into and it. And do you know why you can't see that beat? <laughs> Would you like me to tell no, you? No, I honestly think that at the beginning it looks like she's really trying. She is, and yeah. then it starts being like, and then she's doing like, funny stuff. Fuck, she this is silly. Want to yeah. do it. I don't want to be doing that. And she's really not into it. it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there should have been two Gab's reactions yes. where she sees her really and trying then, and, and then, then sees frown. her give up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So then she does give up. She's like, okay, no more. And the Amazons are like, well, you know, she is old, she's probably <laughs> tired. And like, Eris is like, okay, let's just take it to my place. Let's go practice there. And then Xena sidles up to Gabs and like sees her with her like full antler headdress that she's now wearing and is like, hey, you make that yourself? And that's not nice. That's really mean. Yeah. Which is so annoying because, excuse me, hold on a second. She made her own entire shamanist outfit. Why is she making part, fun of this? I know. Yeah, that's how you do this. You so, make everything yourself. I don't care why she's making fun of it. I feel like they were textually pointing out the antler hats and stuff. And Zena's obviously in this mood of just finding everything a little bit silly. And so... I don't think that she meant to be mean at all in this moment. It was just kind of like... Yeah. Nice hat, haha, uh-huh. and <laughs> just was not the right thing to say. She should make fun of the hat bangs instead. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, like us. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to take this seriously. This is serious. Gonna fight. It's so bad. Uh, I mean, like, sad in that way. So Gaps is like, I can make a difference with this tribe. You do understand that, don't you? And she puts on a very assertive voice, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Take control of the conversation, Gaps. And she says, I do. And Gaps says, You don't. And she says, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. And she's like, look, it's not that I haven't tried. And then Gab says, but you haven't tried. Zena. I can dance better than that. Well, of course you can, Gabs. <laughs> God, way to rub it in. <laughs> so, yeah, she rightly is pointing out that this isn't her. Um, it goes a little overboard, but also... Is just really not in the mood. <laughs> like, it's really just rejecting the whole thing and hates all of the... All of the togetherness is making me sick. The shared laundry? Yeah. Communal meals? Group baths? Not into the... Not Zena into loves this. group baths. I know. I don't understand, um, Zena. You're just in a bad well, mood, Well, if the group girl. is just her and Gabs, she likes she it. She likes <laughs> it. Maybe group laundry is the one that's really getting her down. So, yeah, then they have this hard part where, like, Gab says, you never intended to stay, did you? Which, yeah, feels a little, like, going overboard. I think on some level she yeah. wanted to try. She wasn't trying to just sabotage Gab's. Like, she she yeah. gave it her all. Sort of. Yeah. She's just not up to it. I mean, it's just, what is her all in this situation where you know and she knows that she's not going to do this? Yeah. You know, I think she got to the point where she's like, well, Gabrielle's happy, I'm going to try for sec, but... I don't know. You know if it's really not going to be for you. I think she can really tell pretty yeah. quickly that like this. And is I'm pretty sure she, she has be. explained Zena to, to inquiring men in the past, being like she doesn't settle down. That's not what Zena does. Mm-hmm. Like we've heard Gab say why this is an impossibility. So right. it's not like Gab's complaint. Can, can but complain I can see her go. She will do it for me. Yeah. And yeah. that that too. Like and wanting her to realize this is important for her and again i just i'm gonna like continue to mention the baby x factor because it Mm -hmm. does change everything it's big big. so yeah so zina's just like i'm gonna take you even go fishing for a while yeah she's like i I need a break and zina zina in this moment out of the both of them is the one that actually really looks like she's gonna cry and it's very upsetting it's really true yeah well, yeah. I mean, it's, it, you know, I think she wants Gabrielle to beg her not to do it. She, mm-hmm. like, puts that out there as a, like, okay, like, you know, please beg me. And Gab's, like, will not beg her. She says, that's probably a good idea. 
Yeah. And they're both, you can just tell, it's like, none of them want this. No. And you can see it in their faces, and it's so, it's so awful. Sad. And she's like, fine, um, t- like, me and Eve are taking off after the coronation. So they're going to stay to watch that and then go. I ah! also love how they, you know, they have this couple's fight, and they break up, and it's all very polite. It's, you so know, polite. there aren't really, like, raised voices or, like, angry things said. Like, for the most part, it really is just like, this isn't for me. I gotta go. Do you gotta go? You gotta go. Like, it's... No. That, that in a way, makes it harder to see them just sort of politely deciding to do this. This is not a rift. This is... Yeah. Yeah. This is something new. Well, it almost cuts deeper than the rift, you know? Yeah. Is this the scene where Josh Becker gave them some good directing Yes. Advice? I think originally all of these lines about, like, is that a good idea? Do you really think so? Uh, th- that was just going to be statements. Like, I'm going to do this, okay. And he told them to restate it all as questions. So, should I do this? I think so, don't you? Yeah. You know, and, and that really does mm-hmm. add something to the scene. You see how much they don't want to do it, I think, more yeah. than if it were just statements. That's how you do directing, guys. Good job, Josh Bex. You <laughs> spill that tea, sir. <laughs> so then there's a really sweet little scene, I thought, where Gabrielle is in the Amazon Community Center on her throne, going through the scrolls, looking oh, for yeah. something in the code to help her with Joxer. And she just overhears these Amazons fangirling over Xena. Oh, yeah. They're just like, Xena, Xena, like, teach us the war cry. Like, what's up with that chakram thing? And she just smiles, this, like, private smile. Yeah. Like, and to me, that was, like, her remembering, like, that was me. That's, like, Aww, the relationship I used to have with Xena. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I, I also really liked where she's there to read the Amazon Law Scrolls. Yeah. And when she opens it up, she's she's like fun. Like she that's like her whittling scene. Like right. she's clearly not having nope. a good time. <laughs> no, the the fine for you. Like, oh, has to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and she finds the loophole. Yes, thank yeah. goodness. And then there's this funny cut to Jaxer where you see that he's been playing tic tac toe in the dirt with, with his himself. Feet. I thought that was funny. That's his whittling scene, okay? <laughs> no, Everybody's... but he's, like, doing it legit. Like, he's legit play. You can't play <laughs> that game by yourself. So Gabs comes and lets him know about what this mm-hmm. loophole is, which is if he pledges his allegiance to the queen, he can be pardoned for a first offense. Right. And now it's time for the full moon coronation ceremony. I love how Gabs when is told, like, okay, go prepare for the ceremony. She's like... Yay, ceremony. <laughs> She's like so over it now. She's now, done. now that Zena like has like textually said I'm not into it, guys. Uh-huh. It's like, oh finally I can kind of admit that I'm oh. not that into it either. It's great. It's really good. <sighs> all right, well the way that it, all these beats happen. Yeah. yeah. They're set up well. As Queen, Gabs needs to pay tribute to the full moon. Which is funny, because wasn't there a full moon in Lifeblood yeah, last week? Yeah, we didn't mention Shh. it then. Don't talk about, don't <laughs> it's talk about the it. full moon every day in ancient Greece. Sister Wolf must howl at Sister Moon until Sister Sun chases her away. <laughs> And she has to bear her glory to the moon. Right. So off come the clothes, <laughs> on comes the mud. Yep. And it's going to bring them some good fortune. So you have all these shots of Gabs howling at the moon. She's really not <laughs> happening. She's just so over it. This is so different from us when we were painted blue and howling at the moon. Totally we were <laughs> so into it. We should be Amazon queens. Eris does some uh, flipping for Xena. She shows right. up some she's, skills. She's still trying to go off with Xena. Yeah, she's like, oh, well, now that you and Gabs are broken up, uh, I'll, I'm going to be your new traveling and, companion. Yeah, <laughs> she, like, bonks into some stuff somehow. I don't know what. And I don't know what happens, but midway through this episode, the sound design goes <laughs> completely <laughs> bananas and becomes a cartoon that yeah. wasn't in the first half. And here's one of the first times where I noticed it, and it's just, she's seeing stars literally like she's in a Looney Tune. <laughs> but whatever. Then Xena is talking to her about how, you know, Aries wants to come with her, and Xena's just like, no. 
and says Gabrielle and her have only separated for a few weeks or a couple weeks to see if we can work things out. Basically, she's like, we're on a break. Mm -hmm. And it's so upsetting. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. Help me. We were on a break. So Jackson pledges his allegiance to Gabs for the Amazons. Hearken unto me, (laughs) O Queen Gabrielle, I have done wrong. (laughs) I thought that stuff was funny. I giggled. So then you come back to Xena uh, and Eris, Xena's packing um, to go on this fishing trip. And when she comes back, Eris is like, oh, uh, I took the liberty of putting some of my things into uh, the saddlebags. She says, it'll be a great experience. And who Who knows knows what will develop? (laughs) This Dang. episode is nonstop. <gasps> nonstop. Eris is so thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> and then Zena breaks to her that she's not looking for a new sidekick, temporary or otherwise. Eris is really brokenhearted and just kind of gives her Eve back. Like, oh. I'm not your new dad. <laughs> no. And, but yeah. yeah, she had taken out Gabrielle's scrolls to make room for her stuff. And so Zena says she's going to go and get them. Yeah. And this is amazing. This is so good. And it comes out of, I mean, not nowhere, but just like I didn't expect the show to follow up with this. I'm right. Delighted yeah. it did. So she takes the scrolls into the house, and uh, I, th- I think the intention was just to like leave them there, but then she opened it up and started reading one to Eve. Mm-hmm. She, she wants to hear her story. story. Yeah. And the story that she has opened up to is the episode titled The Return of Callisto. <laughs> and Zena says, this will be a good one. <laughs> because it'll, I mean, Certainly she's, a not, good episode. she's not at all wrong, but I feel like to read to a baby. I mean, she's a baby. What does she know? It's fine. It's like taking your baby to read our movie. This is some Are they only, shit. But they only chose to do this one because this is the episode where Gabs fucks a dude. <gasps> No. What? Why? Right? Like, this I mean, is it the is. One. That's true. So, like, she mentioned it earlier, so, like, you gotta follow up with oh, this. Oh, okay. I'll give it to you. I love the whole, the way it's kind of uh, written to sound like the Iliad. I, I love that stuff. The Wrath of Callisto. I think it's beautiful. That's my favorite of part of, Z- of uh, Gabs' writing. Yeah. Is these openings. I agree. <laughs> they're, they're beautiful. The courage of Xena. Yeah. It's like whenever she says that stuff. And the ineffable mystery of a friendship as immortal as the gods. Xena is having a feeling. <laughs> she is, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. And you know, it's so nice to have Xena reminded of everything she has going with Gabrielle like exactly. through her writing through, yes yeah. she sees herself through Gabrielle's eyes and that makes her go oh my god yeah <laughs> I love this person yeah oh, and it is nice to have like I know we kind of said not the best things about the scrolliness in Lifeblood but it's fun to have two back to back mentions of, of the bardliness and scrolliness this is better writing than the scrolls yeah. of Lifeblood <laughs> yeah this is, yeah, this is um, great. But, yeah, just so moving. Help. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, going off Ides of March where Xena admitted she hadn't read the scrolls yeah. and hoped she would one day. This is such a wonderful way for her to finally read them in the midst of a fight so mm-hmm. that it can kind of bring her back together yeah. with Gabrielle yeah. and that she's sharing them with Eve. Like, everything about this scenario is so perfect. I really love it. Okay, back to stuff that is way less good. <laughs> Araya frees Joxer and she like takes him into a barn and then she like attacks him. She wants a baby real bad. And at first he's like trying to like cool her down being like, I'm a pagan or you're a pagan and I'm a Zoroastrian. How are we going to raise our kids? Uh, But then of course he, because he's problematic, he just goes along with it and it's like, let's just keep practicing. And she's happy to do that. Does that mean he worships Dayhawk? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Put a coin in that. No, he is a Dayhawk worshiper now. <laughs> That's canon. <laughs> we have Gabrielle telling Cyan that she has figured out this loophole and that she's pardoning Jaxer. But of course, before everybody can agree to that, you have Cyan 
figuring out that like they're like in the barn and like yeah. goes and like breaks it up. There's also a lot of sound effects oh, while they're man. having their seduction. Uh, There's like tiger noise. It's so That's bad. So There's like a spring noise for Joxer's erection. <laughs> I really <laughs> did not approve. <laughs> I enjoy sound effects and this one was not good. Oh no. Okay, well it continues to be so uh, because Sam finds them and right. Joxer's in there with that pillory still on him. Right. This big, whole time. Yeah, this, there's like a giant rope and so they she grabs the rope and's trying to get him out of the barn. And this is like physical comedy, like Ted Raimi moment for like twenty minutes. Yeah, it lasts too long. As long as that diaper shot (laughs) swing. Yeah. Yeah, that lasted too long. Uh, I also I guess Jocks were in the middle of it started saying this isn't right. I'm not Yeah, he keeps saying like you're young, which made me go, Oh my god. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. It kind of reminds me of Hagar, where it's like too little, too late. Like, I better say the right thing, because otherwise I'm going to look bad in this scenario. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, now now you realize. (laughs) All right, so, okay, cut to my other favorite moment. Gab's back in the throne room. She's cleaning it. She's like dusting the She's throne. She's dusting and it. When I saw this, I was like, "This is what Vera would be like if she were an Amazon queen. She'd spend the entire time just like feather dusting her throne." I loved it, and then, and then I was like, "Is she thinking of Baby Row right now?" Because they had their moment. <gasps> right with the dusting. feather dusting. Oh, she might be just because all this domesticity stuff. <laughs> I mean, true. we were talking about how it was that nightmare of heterosexuality. Yeah. Here's like a better version of stuff but it's still not working out the way she might have dreamed it would because yeah. she's slowly now realizing that it's not for either of them yeah well before we get too far from that scene with Rhea the way I know they're supposed to be young I guess they're teens I don't really yeah, know yeah she could call them kids um just because they don't live in a community with men doesn't mean they're this fucking naive. And it's really <laughs> annoying. It I think is. the Amazons are smart. And I agree. It, I really don't understand why they don't even know what a kiss is. She's like, it's called a kiss! <laughs> what? Like, I don't understand. The yeah. fucking cavemen in Lifeblood knew what a kiss was. I'm gonna throw a coin in for that. These young Amazons might be my least favorite portrayal of Amazons, including Amazon High. Like, those are, those are better, because they at least, you know... They knew kisses. They, they, <laughs> they yeah. knew kisses. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Oh, man. So uh, Cyan leads Rhea back into the throne room and is like, I found her like kissing Joxer out of season, yeah. the thing we talked about. Uh, and now Gabrielle can't even pardon him because this is his second offense. Yeah, and Cyan's like, ha ha, it's his second offense. <laughs> blah, blah, to give me them eyes. So now he must accept the royal challenge, which yeah. is a fight to the death with the queen of the Amazons. Great. I hope Gabs <laughs> kills him. <laughs> So did everyone, I'm sure. (laughs) So Gabs goes for a nice schmaltz in the bathhouse. That's how you make up your mind about a difficult problem. And then she's like, think, Gabrielle, think to herself. (laughs) She's trying to figure it out. And it's sad because she not only is, like, doubting herself, she's, like, doubting her ability to be queen now. Yeah. Yeah. This sucks. Mm -hmm. Joxer's ruining everything. (laughs) As always. And she's talking to herself. And Zena's there and overhears her. And says that, you know, Gabrielle's basically like, how did I ever think I could be a good queen? But Xena points out that, like, she has a good heart. Yeah, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. nice. So that makes me think a queen. I that that's how she enters, being yeah. like, your heart. Yeah. Hi. And she just came from reading her beautiful scrolls. Right. And she's like, you read them? Mm-hmm. Oh. I always said I would. Ah! <laughs> And when she says you read my scrolls, I had just like an audio flashback to you used my scrolls. <laughs> oh no. It made me smile. I thought you had a flashback to Ides of March. No. Yeah. You used my scrolls. <laughs> but, but she, okay, so she's like, I always said I would, and Gabs says that she didn't believe her. Which yes, yeah, and that says a lot about their relationship. That the, I mean, they've known each other for years, so to have obviously yeah. this is something Zena always says. She's never followed through with it. So to follow through on this after all this time, it's a big deal. 
And then, of course, after that, she's like, well. And she's so, she's a little smile, a little expectant look. Yeah. Wants Zena's thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, Zena says, I think that anyone who writes like you can, who can find grace and meaning in everything that happens, she's sure to make a wonderful queen. That's beautiful. And that's worth sticking around to see. Oh. Everybody's making Feelings faces. Feelings attack. Oh. So now finally, Zena is even saying that she would do the domesticity thing because she knows it might unlock something wonderful in Gab. She's willing now. Uh, I love that Gab says, you know, more little smiles and then kind of looks down because, you know, when you're like being shy, embarrassed, it's so cute. Just like moved and overcome and has to look at the floor. Oh, so then, unfortunately, they have to go back to discussing the plot. Yeah. Uh-huh. The royal challenge. Yep. What can they do? They, they're going to need, a, like, a good show, the Amazons. <laughs> so Xena tells Gabs that she won't have to kill Joxer because I will. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yep. That was the promo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Rhea and Joxer are both now in the stocks. They're talking about something. I don't I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, Rhea kind of explains why she's so baby crazy, but at the same time, it's like not the greatest explanation. This whole character of Rhea is a little yeah. kind of like, ah, like it's, there's no nuance really here. I don't know. <laughs> she's going to get banished. Right. Right. He's going to get killed and she's going to get yeah. banished. So now it's time for like the royal challenge and Gabs invokes the ancient right for the queen's champion to fight in her place. Yay. And Guess Z- who? Zena the mountain in. from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Zena comes in wearing her outfit. Yeah. So like, this is like a really big deal. And like, ah, it's, it's been a while, but like. I, ha- I had that feel, you know, that like, oh my God, there she is. Like, remember that thing? I forget who it was, like, whoever actor it from was, season one. I can tell you, it was um, Jay LaGaia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was like that story from like when he first saw her in season one, I guess, because that's when he would first see her. Uh, in the actual Warrior Princess outfit, it's like completely different. And it's like, whoa, like you really react to that. And I it, felt it that. It drops your jaw. It's I felt that through the TV. Moment. Yeah. yeah, and it's true that, I mean, we talked at length on Amphipolis Under Siege about how amazing it was to see her in the outfit, but yeah. it, that one didn't really have a moment like this yeah, where this she one changes. Really, yes, yeah. yes. The fact that you get the change here, yeah. it's a big deal. Well, and then and then, and then this episode takes a turn. A turn. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Josh was like, see, told you she had a plan, and then Rayo's like, yeah, her plan is to kill you. <laughs> <It's> pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about. So it's all wrestling thing. Wrestling. Yeah, it's, it's wrestling. There's a ring. Yeah, they're so doing that. It, wrestling is like always huge, but like I definitely remember it being huge in the nineties. Huge 90s. in the nineties. Like, I think the biggest it ever was. Yeah, it's, so it's really big now. We just don't pay attention. Yeah, but like it was <laughs> because there was no, but because there was like less content, less channels. Yeah, you and everything. Mm-hmm. Like I fucking watched it. I don't watch wrestling now, right. I know, but I did I know back you then. You're more aware of it. And like, the people yeah. and the characters, yeah. Yeah. And of yeah. course, everybody these days who loves, like, prestige TV is aware of wrestling because of GLOW. Right, yes. Yeah. Woo. Woo, GLOW. I like the, like, knockoff, uh, you know, bargain brand, We Will Rock You, that starts playing. Yeah, and... that's pretty fun. And just, the, you know, the way the camera pulls out to reveal the ring is pretty funny. Like, it is just yeah. such an unexpected reveal. Oh, wrestling ring and this is a reused ring from the castor oil fight oh it must be yeah yeah Yeah, i think um josh becker said that this was his idea like a very last minute sure of course it was part of the one day rewrite yeah the original idea was just to have xena put the pinch on joxer Mm -hmm. and then revive him and he was like no no we need something more so he came up with this did they Yeah, I would, I would be fine with just I, yeah, one tiny scene. Obviously. But uh, this way he got basically all the actors to just improvise their own yeah. wrestling banter. And he said Such that as. he didn't even warn Ted Raimi that oh, this God. was what they were going to do. So everything Ted says is just literally just like flying by the seat of his pants. Yeah. Like Lucy at least had a moment to think up what Xena could say. So she came up with Wet Willie. 
Uh, oh God, no! She's. I am Zena, the yeah. ultimate woman. <laughs> Thighs of Doom she came up with. Thighs of Doom. Yeah. And you are the ultimate meatball. <laughs> Can you do it in Zoya to destroy <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Voice? Let's hear Zoya say It's just going to sound like Barai's, but all right. all right. All right. We want to hear it. I will crush his head like a peanut between <laughs> the thighs of Doom. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Many call her Xena the Chimp, but I call her Xena the Chimp. Oh, boy. Okay, it goes on forever. They fight. Forever. Yeah, they do a lot of, like, I hate that. I don't like it, actually. (laughs) Lucy's a great sport and all. Yeah. She always has fun. Like, she loves this shit. Yeah, she has a sense of humor, all right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, you would penetrate his brain with a great wet willy. No, that was like I that really? I did that need that. That was maybe Ugh. one step too far. I Ugh. agree. So she finally puts the pinch on him, and this is like actually some hilarious stuff. Happens. Yeah, this I was rolling on the floor. She's like, "What constitutes death?" She just shut off all the blood to his brain, so. You know, he's there on the ground, like, choking. And Sans like, well, he's still moving. <laughs> and Zena's like, uh, uh, okay. And she, like, punches him to knock him out. And is like, how about now? And Eris is like, well, I can still see him breathing. <laughs> so she, like, does some kind of other punch. She, like, hits his nose weird. Yeah, to, like, stop him breathing. Yeah. And then his heart's still beating. <laughs> so she, like, does some... Something. Yeah. You know, takes care of that. He dead now. (laughs) Yeah. Sayan declares him dead now. And very she's very happy about it. (laughs) And then she like in you know, super fast forward, like takes off all these various pinches and he's alive again. Yeah. The the super fast rewind. The super fast rewind. Yeah. Yes indeed. And the Saiyan's like, What? You tricked me. Yeah. Well, it's fine. He was dead. Yep. And <laughs> yeah, that, it wasn't that he had to stay dead. Yeah. So Nothing she killed in the rules said that he had to stay dead. And brought him back. That's right. And then Gabs rightfully points out that when a kiss means death or banishment, then the laws need to change. Mm. Yeah. True. Although there could still be some, you know, laws against perverts. Gross, yeah. Yes. So he still behavior. did a bad thing. It is this episode goes out of its way to pardon him for his actually bad behavior that he yeah. did. Yeah, it wasn't like an accident. He really did that at the beginning yeah. for a long time, and it's not okay. Cyan is, like, super shamed, and she, like, basically banishes herself. Yeah, which well, she thought, I mean, Gabriel wanted to establish some stuff, and Cyan took it to a super extreme and wanted her, like, thought being yeah. strict with the tradition was what she really wanted. Right. Was not in the end. So Gabs unbanishes her and also makes her the leader because, oh my God, we're not staying after all. I know, this is so like, is this really the way to leave things? Like this woman <gasps> literally wanted to walk out and now you're like, no, actually you're in charge. Bye. Uh, yeah. Well, she always wanted to be in charge. Yeah, and we know she'll do well at it, I guess. Yeah. Even <laughs> yeah. though, I don't know, has she learned her lesson? We just I have think to she has. take it on yeah. faith. She also has a good heart, I think. Yeah. Uh, Eris, of course, is disappointed. Yeah. Because she, she, you know, wanted to be the sidekick. She just got fired. <laughs> she was fired a million times. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she was ever hired, frankly. <laughs> so uh, then we get the last scene of the episode, which is extremely so cute. So, so great. Cute. You get that overhead shot of yeah, the everybody up. lying on a blanket. Yeah, this seems the blankets lined up. Uh, fins, fems, and gems. Yeah. And A Day in the Life both mm-hmm. have these endings where you're yeah. lying up looking at the sky. Yeah. Jaxer's like asleep, asleep on the side on his own like little blanket. And you have Xena Gabs and Eve mm-hmm. in the middle. Yeah. I love how Gabs kind of has her arm around Eve kind Aww. of like possessively. So like cute. My baby. And Zena's like playing with the little doll. Yeah. She's like making Flipping. a flip. Yeah. yeah. It's like so mommy. Cute. It's so yeah. cute. <laughs> and what do they, they say? They're like, who's She's that? Like, who's that? Who who's that? Yeah. Who's, who's down that? there? <laughs> it's so, so cute. Um, of course, I love the tall smallness. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Ever so much. Yeah. So they have this little conversation about, you know, closing things yeah. out, Zena oh. making sure Gabs is okay with leaving the Amazons, not being queen herself. Yeah, I just love when Zena has her armor off 
and oh. it's just like the under leather nice. stuff. That's all. See, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, like she goes like, nice. vulnerability to the scene yeah. of like, relaxedness. It makes it feel like real relaxing. Actual relaxedness. You're right, as opposed to just wearing your shaman outfit to bed. Yeah. That's your day outfit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> By the way, they had crazy sound effects for because she was fighting in the Warrior Princess and she did the like Tarzan like monkey like. Oh. Chest, oh yeah, fist the thing, sound and of her, they did crazy metallic yeah, sound effects. Fists for it. against the breastplate was a huge Yikes. sound effect. So yeah, back to their conversation. Um, Gabrielle says that like she thinks that Cyan is going to be a very good queen mm-hmm. once she's loosened up a bit. Yep, yep. And Zena's like she'll look better in those antlers in the oh. mud. Zena did not like Gabs in those antlers. Yeah, it's weird it's how much she did not so like weird. it. Weird. I thought it was cute. <laughs> I don't know was what she thought about. She's clearly seen her in that outfit before, basically, but whatever. And then they're like, where to next? Cruise down the Nile? Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. I mean, that would be fun <laughs> if they just said that. Oh, but now it's like the third yes. Egypt reference. Yeah, because then she was like, I know someone whose couch we can crash on. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, they really want us to be excited about <laughs> Antony and Cleopatra. And we are. Yeah. We are, because we love Natalie Merchant. Love oh, Natalie Merchant. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's well, kindred spirits. I like it. Um, <laughs> I, d- I don't like some of it, but I love how super subtexty, main texty yeah. it is. For sure. Could you come up with some kind of like meaning to that title? No, I want to come up with some better title for it. What can be called? Well, Zena and Gabs are kindred spirits because they both need to be on the road. The oh, end. Oh, shit. I don't know. I would probably call it like Playing House or mm. something. Um, but, like that show? No, no, <laughs> not like that show. Um, I don't have a title for it. <laughs> Goober. F- finders peepers. <laughs> no! I, I, we gotta, I gotta go find this goober thing. I don't know why I missed it. I oh my feel god. Really <laughs> gotta watch the whole it. episode again. You're not qualified yeah. to podcast about this if I'm goober. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a 90s like word. Goober. I say it a lot, I think. Yeah. Maybe you got it from here. Maybe. I, I don't know because I wouldn't have seen it. I only saw Lifeblood, remember? And that wasn't yeah. even the 90s. <laughs> Listeners, send us your alternative titles for Kindred Spirits. We want to know. <laughs> well, we did it, so Yay! we're done with this. Cool. All right. Uh, you can find us uh, at xenawarriorpodcast.com where there's links to everything, uh, including to Apple Podcasts where you can... Uh, listen and then also leave star ratings and reviews which uh, help people find the podcast and we also just love uh, getting that feedback from you and we are on all of the social medias Uh, twitter is slightly different it is at xena warrior pod whereas we are also on Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr at Xenoware Podcast. Um, and then you can also find everything that we're doing on Patreon at patreon.com slash Xenoware Podcast. The one where they're very gay. I like it. As a title. Yeah, like a friend's <laughs> episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thumbs up. I would 100% call it that. I probably call it that anyway. <laughs> the power. The passion. The, the podcast. podcast.